Revelation chapter 3 verse 11 it says behold hold fast unto what you have so that they may not take your crown from you your presence this morning means that you're holding on your crown you're working on your crown that no one will take it from you it's a crown you gain from God through grace and deserve crown let's worship God You speak and won't let go. For to my needs, as I lift my hands and pray. God, every reason to be here again. Father's love that draws me in. All my eyes want to see is a glimpse of you. All I need is. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. One more day is not the same. Spirits call my heart to sing Drop to the voice of my Savior once again When my soul filled with that your son Gave his life to save the earth Rest in the time that you're watching over me All I need is All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is. It's you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord.
Jesus, awesome in power forever, awesome and great is your name. Through you, we overcame the enemy through the blood. Yes. Last week, the title of the message was The All Sufficiency of Christ. The All Sufficiency of Christ. The Apostle Peter wrote in his second letter false teachers had infiltrated the church and that the worst of their many heresies was that they were even denying the Lord. But we know that Jesus is sufficient for justification because for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We know that Jesus is sufficient for sanctification because his grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And we know Jesus is sufficient for glorification because he will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Good news. God's amazing grace says that you can't be good enough to get to heaven, but you haven't been bad enough to be kept out. Amen. Reality check. As you live out your Christian experience, remember that the road to faith maturity passes through hardships and there are no shortcuts. Amen. Application, rest in the Lord and remember that we are all just passing through this life and that as a child of God, you are headed for heaven. Somebody should say amen to that. Amen. There are three steps to heaven and each of those steps justification, sanctification, and glorification. Each of those steps goes through the Son of God, whom is all sufficient to get us there. Amen. Amen. Does anybody want a feel-good message this morning? You came to the wrong church this morning if you want a feel-good message this morning. As a matter of fact, the title of this message is, Are You Denying God? And we say that because we've been looking at Peter, what he wrote in his second epistle, and he said that the false teachers were like wolves that had infiltrated the church. They were like tares amongst the wheat, and the, they were bringing false teachings, egregious heresies into the church, and they were leading some people in the church, out of the church, and away from God. And he says the worst of these heresies was that they were even denying the Lord. And that's why we were talking about Jesus is all sufficient. Jesus is all sufficient. They were denying the Lord, but we know that Jesus is all sufficient. So this morning, we're going to kind of do a little bit of a heart check on ourselves. When Peter wrote his letter that he was deeply troubled that false teachers within the church were even denying the Lord. He was writing with a broken and contrite heart, which came from decades of knowing that he too had denied Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times, and Jesus restored his repentant disciple three times. It would be easy for us to see Peter as having done something that we certainly wouldn't do, or would we? Or have we? Or are we? This morning, let's search our hearts. And because he already knows, let's be real with God. Let's ask ourselves this most uncomfortable of questions. Have we denied God what is due him? Father, speak into our hearts. Help us admit and recognize and admit to you, because you already know, but to admit to ourselves where we are falling short today, Lord. Are we denying you, Lord? Amen. 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 We're going to ask four questions. Embarrassed of your faith is a question. 
We're going to ask a question. Don't like hanging out with other believers? That's a question. We're going to ask ourselves, are we stealing God's glory? And then we're going to ask one more question. Are we letting the offering plate go on by? Uncomf uncomfortable questions for many of us. Let's look at the first one. Let's go to Matthew. And before we go to Matthew chapter 10, is where our first scripture is. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 26, verse 69. Everybody go there. Mark it. If you don't want to go there, jot that down. This is the Apostle Peter. Peter and the other disciples had just been walking with Jesus for some three years, and now they came to arrest Peter. They, I mean, I'm sorry, they arrested Jesus because um, he was betrayed by Judas. And now the heat is on. The heat is on. If you go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 34, verse 33, Peter says, Peter answered and said to him, Even if we are made to stumble because of you, I will never made to be to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you, this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And he said this to all the disciples. Go to verse 69. Now Jesus is arrested the same night. Verse 69, Matthew chapter 26 says, Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You also were with this Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not even know what you're talking about. Verse 71, And when he had gone out of the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were, with, who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, Peter denied it with an oath. I don't even know this man. Verse 73, And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you, Galilean. Verse 34, Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I don't even know this man. Immediately a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus who had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. So when de these years and decades go by, and Peter writes in his second letter saying, they, They're even denying the Lord. He knows, he's speaking from experience. He knows the depth of that heresy. He knows how serious that is. He had been carrying this burden. It says he wept bitterly. And I'm certain he wept bitterly for many years upon that and decades, understanding his failure to Jesus. So what about us? Do we deny the Lord? Let's look at the first one. Go to Matthew chapter 10. And the question that we can consider this morning is, embarrassed of your faith? We didn't deny a good testimony before the Father by the Son if we deny our good testimony of the Son before man. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 says, Jesus speaking, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. And Peter was there. If you go to the beginning of the chapter, you'll see Jesus commissioning his disciples. He said the 12 disciples were there, and, G and, and he commissions them, and, they, and it, it names who they were, and Peter was amongst them. So Peter, again, when he writes that letter, he knows. He knows from experience what it means to deny the Lord. So ask yourself this morning, are you embarrassed of your faith? There's people out there who will deny their faith before men. And Jesus says, if you deny me before men, I would deny you before my Father. How many know that there's power in the name of Jesus? When you speak Jesus, you speak power. How many know that Jesus is a stumbling stone, a rock of offense? Jesus, uh, Jesus offends people. Jesus trips people up. He's a stumbling stone. 
And sometimes if you bring the name of the Lord, people will stumble over him. We stumble over him. Because we go around talking and looking and dressing like a Christian, and we stumble over our own faith because we stumble over Jesus. Because his standards sometimes are hard to, for us to maintain. Revelation chapter 12 says that the devil has been cast down to heaven. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is going around the earth and he's not happy. He's angry because he knows his time is short. But then it says, for those who are in Christ, we can overcome the devil. How? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, the word of our testimony. See, there's power in the name of Jesus. When we need to testify, our testimony needs to be Jesus. Look what Jesus did in me. Jesus, look, look what Jesus did in my life. Look what he's doing in in my life and look what he I look forward to him doing in my future. Lena and I were at breakfast yesterday at a restaurant and these guys came by to selling the candy for their for their group. It's a it's a home, a men's home, right? And they go around, they sell the candies and stuff. So I like we like to engage with them and find out their, what their story is. It was a seventeen year old young man and we just you know, not per se to buy the candy, but just to engage and buy some candy to support him. But what's your story? He was 17 years old in a gang, and now because he's proclaiming and Jesus intervened, he gave his life to the Lord. He's in a new place and with a lot of new potential. And he was happy to proclaim the name of the Lord. Sometimes people that come out of a lifestyle or a problem sort of life and they meet the Lord, they have a greater zealousness than we sometimes do. Or some, maybe there are some of us who came out of a lifestyle that was very destructive. And as the years go by, our testimony need, starts to wane. And maybe we're not as zealous for the Lord as we used to be. And maybe we don't proclaim God's goodness. And say, well, look, at I, I built this business. I got this new job. And we don't proclaim God's goodness in his provision. And we start taking uh, God's glory, which we'll see here that's uh, another thing that we need to consider this morning. Jesus said that being a Christian is not going to make you popular in a secular world. He also commissioned you as his church to proclaim the good news of the gospel, which is salvation by faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Jesus also said that being a purveyor of the gospel would cost you something. How many know the gospel costs you something? But the price that you pay as a Christian can never compare to the price that Jesus paid on the cross for you. That's why we need to not be ashamed of our faith. The Apostle Paul wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of salvation to all who believe. The word of your testimony has great value to you and to others. It would be a shame for you to not spread the good news of what God has done for you. Are you embarrassed of your faith? And see, we can tweak that word embarrassed. Well, maybe you're not embarrassed of your faith, but maybe you don't share when the opportune time comes. Or maybe we just settle and go with the flow because everybody's like this and I don't want to be stick out. So I want to go with the flow and kind of come into the herd or come into the flock and be like everybody else. Because maybe there's some apprehension of you sharing your faith. How about the second question? Don't like hanging out with other believers? We deny the church if we deny our brothers and sisters in Christ. Look at Galatians. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And here we see Peter again. This is after Jesus has been crucified. He already ascended. We go through the book of Acts. The church is planted. Peter's one of the main leaders. He's the leader of the church to the Gentile nation, to the Jewish nation. Paul is the leader of the church to the Gentile nation and then to uh, Peter's in Jerusalem, and Paul is leading from this place over here. Look at uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. This is the Apostle Paul writing. It says, Now when Peter had come to Antioch, see that was the, 
where Paul was headquartered, and from, it was there that he reached out to the Gentile church. Peter was in Jerusalem reaching out to the Jewish segment of the church. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, where Paul was, Paul writes, I withstood him to his face because he was to blame. He was guilty. For before certain men came from James, for before certain men came from James, he was eat with the Gentiles, the non-Jews, because we know that Paul was Jewish, Peter was Jewish. He would eat with the Gentiles, the non-Jews, but when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision, those of the law. And the rest of the Jews who played the, also played the hypocrites with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, they're sitting with other Christians, but because these Christians were of the Jewish faith, these were Judaizers. The Judaizers, the Judaizers were the Christians who came from a Jewish religion, and they, they were teaching false doctrines, saying, no, no, if you're going to be a Christian, you've got to have faith in Jesus, but you also have to do this, too, to be saved. And so they were Judaizers. They were about the law. They were, they were legalistic, and they were trying to... When you do that, it, it subverts the grace of God. Amen? We just read last week that nobody was saved by the law, only by the grace and faith in Jesus. So there's a, a, a thing there where Peter, he wants to keep his good name. He's the leader, and he's a, the leader to the, the Jewish segment or Jewish population of the church, and, he want, and he's kind of struggling there. He said, well, I'm going to act like this when these people come, but when the Gentiles come, I'm just going to hang out with them. So he was embarrassed of his faith. Are you embarrassed of your faith, and are you, you don't like hanging out with other believers? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe they smash your style. You can't talk the way you normally talk when you're amongst your brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And so maybe you make the decision, I'm not going to hang out with them because they're those Christians. I, they're, they're cool and everything, but I want to go with my buddies over here, my friends over there. I want to live like this. And so you make the determination like Peter was doing. You become a hypocrite saying, those are my Christian buddies. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I want to go to the game with them. I go with my non-Christian friends because they're a lot more fun. Don't like hanging out with other believers? How many know that who you hang around with defines who you are? Who you hang around with defines who you are. And we see Peter here, he's struggling. Peter, he's here, he's denying the gospel. He denied the Lord, now he's denying the gospel. And he's a leader in the church. It's really dangerous for you folks, everybody, for us, not to have brothers and sisters of Christ in Christ. The Bible says that we are not to neglect the gathering of the saints. We do that on Sundays and we do that maybe on Thursdays, but how about the rest of your week? How about who you go to lunch with? Who do you invite over? Amen? And the, but the Bible also says that we're not supposed to separate ourselves from the people of the world. As a matter of fact, in his, in his uh, first letter, the Apostle Paul wrote, he says, uh, in my earlier letter, I wrote you and I told you to depart, separate yourself from these type of people. But he said, I did not mean that you're supposed to separate yourself from the people in the world. You're supposed to separate from the crooked people in the church. They're a lot worse. The, people, the crooked people in the church are worse than the people who are not in the church because those are hypocrites and they will lead you astray. Amen? Amen. And, but we also have to remember that association brings out assimilation, so be careful who you hang around with, who you like to be around. Are you embarrassed of your faith? You don't like hanging around with other believers? You've got to remember that who you hang around defines who you are. How about this one? Are you stealing God's glory? Let's go to Acts chapter 12, 20 says, Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord, and having made Blastus the king's personal aid, their friends, so they were kind of working the king, said, well, if we're going to get into the king's inner circle, let's make friends with his assistant so that we can come and, and get something from the king, maybe um, uh, ask for things that we need. And they were asking for things here. It says, and their friend, and they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food from the king's country. So the king, the man, this king, was, they were looking as their provider. He was their provision, so they're kind of 
kissing up to the king and, and trying to be in his good favor. So on a day set by Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, he sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. He spoke and he said, man, this guy can talk. He can talk. And the people were saying, and the people kept shouting, the voice of a god and not of a man. And so he gets real puffy and the, the king's all proud of himself. He's standing up there and he's dressed in his royal attire. He's speaking to the people and he's getting so full of pride. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. He must have been speaking truth because if God says, I'm speaking through you, king, and I want you to, go, you want you to let people know that this is God speaking, not you, and he didn't, he must have been speaking truth. And he did not give God the glory, and he said that God brought judgment upon him. Are you stealing God's glory? We deny what God has done, is doing, and will do when we take credit for the good things that he has blessed us with. How many know that everything good in your life is because God said so? Everything good in your life is because God said so. We have family who lives in the Central Valley, and, and the cost of living is way different there than here. Amen? And they come, and they've asked us over the years, say, well, how can you afford to live here? And we just say, because God said so. God said so. It's about you and not about God. That's a question. It's about you and not about God. If that's true, like King Herod, you have a big problem on your hands. He was judged and eaten by worms. One more question. Are you up for one more? These are the questions. Are you embarrassed of your faith? You don't like hanging out with other believers? Are you stealing God's glory? One final uncomfortable question. Are you letting the offering plate go on by? When I was here, I was, uh, I was preparing the message. I said, I know, you know generally who gives and who doesn't. And I said, I'm going to be real careful with that. I'm not going to look at anybody. <laughs> hey, but they're not here today, so I couldn't look at them anyway. So <laughs> they, they got off the hook. Watch online. Watch. I'm talking to you here. Watch online. Letting the offering plate go by. We deny our blessing if we deny his tithe. Let's go to the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Verse 8 of chapter 3, Malachi. He says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, God says. But you say, in what way have we robbed you, God? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, God says. Even the whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, uh, that there may be food in my house. Well, not for him, for us. And try me now on this. This is where God says, you know, you don't test God. You don't test God. Oh, throughout the Bible, you say, don't test God, don't test God, don't test God. But here he says, test me. And try me on this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, and there will be not even room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. How many of you know if you got this money, man, if, if, it's not a, if you're not doing the right thing, the devourer eats it. It just disappears. Where did it go? The devourer ate it. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fall, fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a Delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Has anybody, if you're a tither, you know, ask any tither. And they'll tell you, of course it works. Of course it works. God doesn't lie. 
Of course it works. And he says here, if you don't do that, you're robbing him. You're also robbing yourself of a blessing. Well, Pastor, that's the Old Testament. You just finished telling us that the Old Testament, the, the, the Judaizers were there, and they were talking about the Old Testament, and now you're telling us that we have to do what the Old Testament of, of the law says, and now, which is it? Well, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go. How many know if you want to know what is truth, you go to Jesus. What did Jesus say about the tithe? Go to the New Testament. You thought you were off the hook. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Verse 23. Matthew 23, 23. Jesus speaks and he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. He said they were tithing. They were paying their tithe. The, t- the scribes and Pharisees. And have neglected the weightier matters of, of the law, justice and mercy and faith. See, it said, look at it, it says, these you ought to have done without leaving the others out. These you ought to have done what? The tithe. He says, you're paying the tithe. He says, you got to keep paying your tithe, but don't forget the heart. Amen? He's saying the heart and loving one another is bigger than the tithe. But nonetheless, he said, tithe. Jesus says, tithe. If you're wondering what the Jesus said, Jesus said, tithe. The Father says, I will bless you. And the question this morning, are you letting the offering plate go on by? It's funny. I watch. I try not to watch. I'll sit in the front seat because I don't want to watch. But I've seen it before. And some and people, are, that, that plate will come by and they look away. It's like they, a bird flew by. And they look up. What was that? And they look up and they're over well, there talking and checking their phones or doing their hair, whatever they do, or tying their shoe, and it just goes right over their head. It's amazing. And you're cutting yourself short. You're selling yourself short. How about this? You're not giving God 10%. How many know that God owns everything? God owns, Seth just said it. God owns everything. You're not giving God 10%. He's letting you keep 90%. He owns it all. Worship team, ask yourself this question. Just consider this, you guys. Are you embarrassed of your faith? Remember, we deny a good testimony before the Father by the Son if we deny a good testimony of the Son before man. You don't like hanging out with other believers? Remember to deny the, we deny the church if we deny our brothers and sisters in Christ. How about, are you stealing God's glory? If you are, we deny what God has done is doing and will do when we take credit for the good things in our lives. How about, are you letting the offering plate go on by? You're denying your blessing when you deny God's tithe. What a tragedy it would be for us to come to a place in our lives as Peter did and to have our hearts carrying the painful knowledge that we failed Jesus in our words and deeds. The reality is that we all continually fall short of the glory of God. The good news is that God's grace is sufficient in spite of our daily, in spite of our daily shortcomings. Yet God's grace is not God's grace is not his permission to live a life that doesn't seek to honor the Lord. Today Don't deny the Lord. Instead, embrace Him. Proclaim Him. Fellowship with your fellow Christians. Give Him the glory for the good in your life and so into His kingdom. Father, we thank You, Lord. You say that the conviction of the Spirit, You say that we are not guilty, that we've been acquitted. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, but yet You said You want to convict us, Lord, so that we may... Uh, feel that uh, and understand that we're, we're missing the mark, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that? Do you know that the Bible says that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ? Amen. And walk according to his ways. And so, although you, you may feel some conviction, maybe you don't, but if that's you, if you feel some conviction in your heart, that's a healthy thing. The Holy Spirit convicts us that we may have a change of behavior. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you.
What did Peter say? I will die with you. Mm -hmm. I will never deny you. Mm -hmm. I will never do that. Mm -hmm. That's what Peter said. That's what we say. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. I will never, I will never, I will never, I will never. But we do, we do, we do. You know when? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you when we do. Mm -hmm. It's when we do things that violate the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's denying Christ right there, right there. And we say, ah, it's just a little thing. But little things get bigger and bigger all the time. So when Jesus, I mean, when Peter was crucified, he was upside down. Upside down, I mean. And his grace is sufficient. But his guilt was so bad that he couldn't even receive that sufficiency of his grace. Because he figures, oh, i got to do this. He didn't do it for Jesus. He did it for himself. He did it for himself. Because that's what we do. When we bury somebody, we go and buy this and buy that and do this and do that because we feel that. We start feeling guilty. We start feeling guilty what we might have done to them or what happened before they, they went home. So we start buying and buying and buying, and we're not doing it for them because they're already gone. And if they're with Jesus, they're someplace good. And so here we're doing it for ourselves, and that's exactly what Peter did. He says, upside down for me, I'm not worthy. We're not worthy of what Jesus Christ is, did. None of us are. But we got to remember that we got to keep focus because we all fall short of the glory of God every single day. And that's why when we pray at night, we ask God to forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Because today, and you notice how Peter started cussing and going crazy? The minute that the enemy sees that you deny Jesus, that foul mouth comes out of your mouth. That foul word, I mean, comes out of your mouth. You start cussing, you start saying this, you start throwing things around, you start acting crazy. Why? Because Jesus is nowhere near you anymore. He's there, but you don't reach out to him. So what do you do? You do what Peter did. I know we're all guilty of that sometimes. We say things that we're not supposed to. We use cuss words that we're not supposed to. We curse our own families, our own husbands, our own wives by saying awful things like that. And we need to be careful. So just remember what happened to Peter. And let's stay focused and ask God to help us keep it together so that we can be acceptable to him. Because how many times have you or you or you or myself have denied Jesus by my actions? My actions speak louder than words, right? My actions speak louder than words. I can say, I love Jesus. But over here acting like a fool. <laughs> Then what happens there? <laughs> Deny Jesus. Deny Jesus. I tell you, yesterday, when I saw that young man, I started crying. Because I say, Lord, you are so amazing. How you can just touch a young life and put him in the right track. I started crying because we all have gone through it. We all have gone through stuff that is not good for us, that is destructive to our lives. But because but when Jesus comes into your life, guess what happens? Things start to change. And you'll never be perfect. So don't try to be perfect. Just do Jesus. That's all you need to do. Because when you start doing Jesus, then it all comes together. Anybody out there that needs Jesus, all you have to call out is his name. Call on his name. He'll come to you. And don't expect for you to just in a minute sometimes there is a miracle but if it isn't keep trying Amen. and keep trying Amen. and keep trying Amen. because sooner or later you're going to be okay with him and he's going to take you because he knows your heart people don't know your heart but Jesus knows your heart Amen. and he's the one that's going to take you through and he's the one that's going to take you where you need to be because he wants you with him he doesn't want you to get lost anybody out there don't forget Jesus call out on Jesus anybody in here call out on Jesus because he's the answer to all our problems. And don't let anybody tell you that he's not, because he is. Because even if you like not to be out, you like to be out in the world, sooner or later this life is over. And we're gonna go face our creator. And when we do, we better try to do the best that we can to stay in, in, in focus with him. Because if we don't, who knows where we're gonna be. So I thank God for all of you. I thank God for his word. I thank God for your lives because you will keep your eyes on God each and every day. Pray and ask God to help you in spite of what you do wrong. 
Anytime you do wrong, the devil wants you to think you're condemned already. He wants you to think you're, you're done. Don't even go there. Say, Lord, I know what I did and it was wrong. Forgive me, Lord, for I belong to you. Continue to cleanse, cleanse me, mold me and shape me, and make me your way. Amen? Amen. Like the potter, potter's house. I mean, potter said, he said, I will mold you and shape you and make you my way. Amen? Amen. So be blessed. And we are thankful for Victor and Gina, his wife. They're a wonderful couple. Uh, uh, would you like to say a word? Hello, church. Hello, Amen. hello. Am I good? Hey, you're in the right place right here. Amen. You got some God-loving uh, pastors right here and mm. to preach the word. And God is working mightily through him. Mm. And he's working mightily through you. Because you wouldn't be here otherwise. Mm. Amen. Amen. So just keep giving them the, keep that focus like, Pastor Leia and Pastor Jean were saying, and uh, God bless you. God mm -hmm. bless you. Mm -hmm. 